snubbed for the VP nomination again. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The church is going to get it on. Thanks for tuning in, my faithful fans. Love to see you out and about. Joe Pranos here is going to be doing some news. Mike O'Malley's going to come in. Very funny actor, creator, producer. He's been on all the TV shows you know and love and created a lot, too. And always, you know, he was on a couple months ago. Funny guy. We're going to do it with him. Uh, before we get into the news, I got ideas. First off, just in general, uh, well, maybe I'll go in theory. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go in order of importance. Uh, the whole Trump shooting thing. Uh, now, as it turns out, there was a cop. Um, it wasn't Secret Service, but there was a local law enforcement, and uh, they climbed up the ladder because the kid was on the roof with the long rifle, and then the kid on the roof trained the gun on the cop who was coming up the ladder, and then the cop went back down the ladder, and then the shooting began. Um, so now the thing about cop <clears throat> and or fireman and, and many jobs, but like especially firemen. I wanted to be a fireman. Mm -hmm. Fireman's got the fucking cushiest gig in the world. Cool uniform, cool, cool car, lots of noise. Everything's good, except for the at some point you may have to go into a burning building. But you may not. Like you may make it a long time without doing it. But the the, the social agreement you have to have with society is, you know, Jimmy's uncle Frank, God rest his soul, was a New York cop for, I don't know, 30 years. He never arrested anyone, never pulled his gun out, never did anything. <laughs> never arrested anyone. But it, uh, I, I remember eight people maybe in like 30 years. Okay. He didn't want to get involved. But you, you could have to draw your piece on day one. Like if someone was holding up a, a liquor store, firing it into a, into a crowd, you know what I mean? Like, you may make it or you may not make it, but the social contract is you may go home and never have a gun trained on you in your entire career, or you could be climbing up a ladder at a Trump rally and see some kid with a long, in which case you may take a bullet to the head, but if you do take a bullet to the head, everyone will then focus on where the shot came from and the president will get down and the Secret Service people will shield him with their bodies feel like they need a kevlar blanket i feel like the pig pile is a little dated yeah <laughs> you know i mean they need a they need just a kevlar camping blanket right and somebody needs to be in charge of it the we're gonna have seven people dive on top of you it's a little imprecise number one because like couldn't have, i could cover you up but someone could shoot and the bullet could go between my legs and into your ball sack. Or even some of these rifles that could go through someone into you. And oh, still... right through you. Yeah. yeah, they go through multiple people. So, should have that blanket. I agree. All right. Anyway. Why don't they make the whole planet of a black box? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. 80s comic. So, um, so, now, the guy goes up the ladder. The kid sees him. The kid probably gives him the back off jack. Uh, with the gun, I don't know all the official particulars. The guy goes back down the ladder. And then writes a report about and it. And then the shooting starts, right? Yeah. And now, look, hard to say what all, any of us would have done in his place, but any of us aren't getting paid full-time as a cop. Right. That's that's the other thing, too. Yeah. Like I, I would have done exactly what he did, but I that's why I've never thought about going to the police academy. R right. Me, me too. But... Actually, I was kind of brave. I used to be. <laughs> I, I've stopped purse snatchers in, in, my, in my career. Really? Oh, yeah. So. Multiple. Uh, I, I've, I've been involved in, in, in things that put me in danger on behalf of strangers in, in the past. I have a, a couple of those incidents. Have, I've have saved multiple up. people from drowning, but no violent. Oh, yeah. No, no stepping into violence. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, in drowning, you know, they say they can panic and take you down, yeah. too, because you've done a lot of surfing. Yeah. Right? I was surfing when a kid fell off the Venice Pier. Oh, really? And a Mexican kid was, uh, I think, fishing with his dad or something like that. Full, 
you know, you know the extra long white T-shirt that for some reason goes down to the knees. He was wearing that, baggy jeans and shoes, and he was in a full panic. And oh, I was right. like, he's going to take me down. There was like scratching going on, and I was just like, hold on to the surfboard. I'll let, I'll keep it strapped to my leash, and I'll swim and just drag you. Like, don't hold me. Hold the board. How much, first off, all – and in here, the only one who fishes are Mexicans. Yeah. And they do a lot of surf fishing, and I have never seen any <laughs> results from surf fishing. Yeah. I have walked – 1,000 miles on a beach. I've stopped and looked in guys' five-gallon buckets. There's never a fish in there. I've Okay, I have seen countless hours of Mexicans surf fishing. Close your eyes and tell me if you've ever mm-hmm. seen them pulling in a whopper. Never. I've never seen them like, whoa, all right, uh, hook on, I'm hooked up, I'm hooked up. I, I've avoided so many uh, fishing lines while surfing off a pier. And you sit there for hours waiting for waves. Never in all of my, you know, hundreds of hours have I seen even somebody reeling in a fish off the pier. The pier will yield you something sometimes. Surf fishing is never (laughs) as a fish ever been caught. I drive down PCH every day. I see Mexicans just standing in the surf. They're surfing. They even have a device for people who are too lazy to fish. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that elite fighting crew, <laughs> SEAL Team 6 it's member is. Like, it's the guy who almost got the, the sniper. I'm so lazy. I'm too lazy to fish. I will stick it in the sand. <laughs> I will put the pole in there, and then I will stand four feet away because I'm too goddamn lazy just to stand here holding a piece of fiber. And I'll never catch anything, so I don't even have not, to worry yeah, about reeling something in. doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, I, when you say to those guys, what, what do you— what test line you using? I, what bait you got? I, I'm just trying to get away from my old exactly. Lady. He just hates his wife. I got a fat Mexican bitch. She lives in Van Nuys. It's fucking 104 <laughs> degrees right now. I got six kids I don't like. Two of them aren't mine. They're running around the same apartment. I'm going surf fishing. He buys and fish on the way. I home. do nothing. I don't even know. I don't even know if they do. I don't know if they have to. Yeah, yeah. At some point, some results. So anyway, all right. So uh, this guy goes up now. If this guy engaged a shooter then the shooter would have, and I don't know, Dawson or Byron, you can look for the timeline or whatever, but obviously if he engaged the shooter, then the shooter wouldn't be able to shoot at the president, and then he would have done his job, and then he would have been a hero. But then it all sounds too familiar because you hear about the school shootings where, oh, the guy was on the scene. I mean, some of these, some of these reports are like, I would rather, I think, like, be caught in an in a molestation allegation than have it known that I showed up at the school and waited mm-hmm. outside for an hour and twenty one minutes and eighteen seconds while fourteen kids were killed. Like, yeah. I would much rather just molestation. I'll take it over this. Like. But the guys don't want to go in. It, 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 it's, it's a very familiar story. And then you kind of go, well, how is this avoidable? Because you go into the academy and you're all gung-ho and you explain you're in the Marine Corps and you've, you, you danger's your middle name and, you know, and you do all the training with the simulations and the paper targets and the plywood and everything. And... But we don't really know what's going to happen. Right. And the sad part is, is during all the simulations and all the training, everything's good. It's like the beginning of Point Break, you know, with Keanu, Quantico, yeah. <laughs> Blue Flame Special, it's raining. He's doing everything. But once the fucking bullets start flying back, not not so sure. And as a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of evidence that suggests 80% of you people aren't doing what we want you to do. And I've really realized there's no way to glean this from just physically interviewing a guy. Like, you would rush, oh, yeah, I'd run toward danger. Right. So if there was a school shooting or a sniper on the roof or something, what would you? Probably use my body like a human shield. I mean, once my clip. We've got to be close to having the technology of, like, putting people in a situation that raises their, like, you know, heart rate and then as seeing long, the As long as they know it's a simulation, we're screwed. And yeah. that's why we need to have fake school shootings break out mm. during the interview. 
<laughs> because well, this guy's like my middle name's Danger. I run toward the bullet sounds or whatever. All of a sudden, pop, pop, pop in the hall, and then you go. Oh my God! It's a school shooting. And he goes under the desk. He, no, he starts pushing the desk toward <laughs> yeah. the door. We got to barricade the door. I'm calling my wife. Unbarricade the door and leave. The interview's over. You will not be getting the job. <laughs> right. That's the only way we can do yeah. this. All right. Uh, other thoughts on uh, Trump and the shooting and whatever. Now this is going to sound a little macabre, but I'm glad the bullet made contact with his ear. And the reason I'm glad is we have evidence of how close the bullet was. There's way too much with bullets. You know, they go, if I'd gotten off that bus two minutes earlier, I'd be dead. And it's like, how far are we talking about here? You know, I was originally supposed to stand here. Yeah. But I stood half a step over and the bullet missed me. But we're never quite sure. I like, had an uh, interview for a job at the World Trade Center, but I didn't get yeah, it. Didn't, had I gotten had it. Had I gotten it. I would have died in 9-11. There was a lot, there's a lot of stuff where the bullet hit my chest and it was this close to my main artery, right. but it didn't. <laughs> but we're always kind of sitting there going, how close? You know what I mean? Like if somebody said, I was up there giving a speech, guy fires a shot, bullet whizzed right by my head. Average Length in my head would be 27 feet from your head. <laughs> yeah. Like if you said a bullet whizz by your head, you could still be traumatized. But, and if you went, no, no, it was right by my head, like right by my head, I'd go, all right, now we're down to 18 feet. Bloody ear, fucking hard to argue with. Yeah. And no real damage. You know what I mean? It's like, it's, it is an effective, it, it is, it is, it is a affirmative. We're no more arguing about, well, was it that close to your head or was it near your head? No, no. We know right without a fact, unless you're like that one ESPN announcer, there is a one ESPN does the sports with the mega ears guy. Oh, oh well, there's guy. the guy who does the red zone. He's got the the giant uh, oh, ears. Oh, is that? And, and it's like is the red zone? Siciliano or something oh, yeah, like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, he's not ESPN. No, I knew I knew I screwed up because you yeah. know all sports. Unless you're Andrew Siciliano, I think that might be his name. Yeah, that is his name. That is yeah. his name. All right. Giant ears. All right. Guy. Now if that guy gets hit in the ear, then yeah. it's still like yeah, but yeah. how close did it really come to? <laughs> still eighteen feet. You're in the eighteen right. foot range. That guy likes the big ear thing because it, it really seems. As correctable as Jules Tooth, you know, at this point. Like, yeah. there is nothing you can't, oh, we just snip a ligament in the yeah. back there, and then we just tape, we use tape for the first week, and then it just heals yeah. and sucks it in. Like, I mean, we've been doing this to dogs for decades. Yeah, do, ask yeah. any Doberman if there's <laughs> yeah. any, anything can be done with their, their ears. Their you know? ears. Yeah, that guy's ears could be sucked in. Yeah. Like ailerons on a plane, like no problem. Yeah. Now he's just the ear guy. This is why he's, this is the only this reason why we're talking about ear guy. All right. So I do like the contact and the blood with the ear because there is no. I'm telling you, if the fire, if that shot was fired, and it it literally went under Trump's ear, and Trump said, "I heard it, and I could feel the air go by it." If I turned on CNN that night, they'd be going, eh. Yeah. First off, we don't know how close that bullet came. And according to our specialist, it was nowhere. In the, you know, they would just go, fuck that. Absolutely. Come on. He's like, We're not even yeah. sure there was a We're bullet not even that sure was shot. Bullet. But the, the ear hit, that's the best. No damage. It's all story. No downside. And no argument on how close it really was when we don't normally believe you. All right. So I got that. I had a dream. I don't know if everyone has these dreams. <laughs> My dreams never work out. And I, 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 it's it's not that I need them to work out, but I wonder what I'm doing in my dream when it's not working out. And I was in some hall. I was doing something. I can't remember. I was at a house. I was engaged in something. And this, like, spectacular looking blonde woman. I think I was, I think I got it 
from watching the Doors movie the night before and Jim Morrison hooked up with this hot blonde in an elevator. And I was just looking at her like all 60s blonde, 60s, 60s blonde's the hottest, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, man, she's hot. And then I had this dream that I'm like, well, I'm in the house. And, I, and this this smoking hot blonde like, like, is, is like comes down the hall, kind of looks at me and like turns into a room. And then. I go into another room and I'm like, I think she recognized me and I got a feeling. I bet she's going to come in here and say hi or, or something. And then I just sit there and I wait and I hang out. And I wait and I hang out. Then I don't know, at some point I get up, come out of the room and, and it's like, uh, where's Ursula? Unless she left or something. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just leave. I don't know why I needed to create that. Why did I do yeah. that? I, that doesn't help me. It doesn't help my confidence. It doesn't, I don't know what it says about me. It was just like, I was just like, hot chick. I was like, oh yeah, she's going she's gonna to say hi. Or at least we're going to strike up a conversation. No conversation, no nothing. Move, moving on to the next thing. You know, now it's like, oh, then the part where, you know, you go outside and go, oh shit, somebody stole my catalytic converter. Yeah. And then you wake up. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Those are my dreams. Your dreams could have been anything and it was beautiful and dismisses me. It, it's never positive, and the only thing I can think of is is not wanting to be disappointed. I have a huge thing, and it drives me nuts when people do this. People do this all they they do this shit all the time. Or I'll, I'll go like, uh, so how much was the boat rental or whatever we bought for my sister's whatever 50th day, something popped up and they'll go it was uh it was like 600 bucks and i go 600 bucks yeah 600 bucks oh well that's not i thought it was going to be more no it was 600 bucks oh well then maybe i don't mind oh no it was six thousand dollars <laughs> and i always go don't do that don't do it yeah yeah just fucking stop just stop everyone don't roll ahead just, just stop. And when I keep going, like, wow, that doesn't sound that pricey. I thought it was going to be more. It was two days, you know. Uh, just stop because that shit fucks me up. You get out of the gate and go six hours. I'll go, well, it's expensive. What are you going to do? But when we go that and then we go the other direction. And when I have a dream that's good and then I wake up, I'm disappointed. <laughs> and I don't like it. Does anyone else have the weird lowest self-esteem dreams that I have constantly? I've never had a dream like that. Dawson, would you ever have a dream where you like spotted a hot blonde and she just kind of ignored you? Like yeah. you didn't even try. I didn't. I, yes. I, it's not like I got I shot down. Dawson's been nodding you know? the whole time. Yes. It's weird. What purpose it, is this serving? It serves zero purpose. It just beats you up. The, the, the self esteem just. It, it, well, I mean, look, you should learn not to talk to hot blondes, right? right? That's yes, not going to work out. Right, no. But I'm saying for me. No, what I'm saying is I don't even talk to them. It's not like we have a weird conversation. It's nothing. It's this, just this dream does nothing to further. Why is she here? Yeah. What's she doing? And then later on, I always like this part because in dreams you're making up both parts of the conversation, right? right? Which I always like. And then uh, um, she goes, um, I think I, I so so. Somebody came up to me and went, "This is uh, this guy's a, a big big time movie writer. He wrote a very popular movie." And I was like, "Oh, what movie did you write?" Not I realized I have to provide the answer right. for the movie that he wrote. <laughs> and without a beat, he goes, uh, "Keys for Catherine." And I go, "Oh, that sounds a little indie thing. That sounds good, you know." And then I woke up and I was like, "Keys for Catherine." But then I was like, "I would buy that." Like, well, I was at a cocktail party, and some yeah. guy said he just got back from Sundance. <laughs> With the movie Keys <laughs> There's a bidding war. Yeah, I go like, oh, yeah, Keys It's a good Cat. movie title. Yeah, I like that. You should, you should use that as a jumping off point for a movie. Just just start with that. The dream. Just start with Keys for Catherine mm -hmm. and see, see where it ends up. Um, is this a recurring theme in your dream, though? Like, this is the regular thing? Disappoint, like, it doesn't work out? You've got to... You've got doesn't work out. Doesn't work out. Never works out. My Does, recurring theme is always I'm un, unprepared for something. I'm ready to go out for yeah, a football game. Yeah, can't get in my shoes. Can't get in the pads. Can't in the find locker my helmet. Room, in the locker room, struggling to get dressed. The yeah. game is going over on without over you. Over again. Yeah. That, that is a reoccur. 
Uh, disappointing, but also like, physically yeah. trying to get ready. Yeah. Some weird scenario where you're playing another high school football game and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. this is going to be yeah. good, you know? And then in the locker room, just struggling to get dressed the whole One time. One shoe missing or the, or the shoelaces snap or they won't yeah, go on. Yeah, or... it's just a weird uh, c- collide escape, a, a, a weird montage of just stuff that won't work. But I also have just sort of general disappointment mm. stuff. <laughs> you know, hot chick in the hall. See, in the in, in, in the Doors movie, Jim Morrison was like at a, at an Andy Warhol party in Soho, and there's a hot blonde that was like looking at him, and he was like looking at her, and then at some point he was getting blown in an elevator. Ah, that didn't happen in my dream. Yeah. She, she looked at me. I looked at her. She looked at me, and then she just left the party. And then she was like, I got to go find Jim Morrison. I got to blow Jim Morrison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Maybe uh, maybe it's hit a little news before um, we bring in Mike O'Malley. Here. Well, the big breaking news from this morning is that Donald Trump has selected his vice president. Oh, Dawson, you got to find... It's just popped in my head, but you got to find man show juggy auditions because when we were when we were doing juggy auditions a, a bit, one uh, one of the hot chicks went. I speak. I do accents, but hot chicks don't do accents. Right? You want to know why? They don't fucking have to. Yeah. No one cares. So <laughs> we go. You do accent. Yeah. Give us an Irish accent. And she goes, O'Malley. <laughs> it was like, it was, it was so, it was everything. You, we, we knew it wasn't going to work, but it, we couldn't have come up with that good. But so Mike O'Malley should, should hear. I'm pretty sure she did Mike's last name. All right. VP Vance. Yep. J.D. Vance, uh, Senator of Ohio, Senator from Ohio, uh, has been chosen to be Donald Trump's running mate. Uh, sources had for weeks said it could be Vance. Senator Marco Rubio and North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum were finalists for the job, but Rubio and Burgum were both told Monday they were not the pick. So it is officially J.D. Vance. Uh, Good, because I was kind of wondering, Rubio's Hispanic, and then there's... uh, Byron? No. Doug Burgum? Not Doug Burgum. Uh, I know Scott. he's not. Tim Scott. Uh, Sorry. So there's Rubio and there's Tim Scott. One black, one Hispanic, you know? And people were kind of going, you know, Trump gets, he's the whitest man on the planet and he gets a lot of shit for being racist and everything. And is he going to just go, we'll do, I'll give the brother the Hispanic so I can kind of court that vote, but also take a little of the heat off. And then you could have... The first Hispanic, Mm -hmm. you know, president, and theoretically, I mean, if a golf ball hits him, you know, out on the links, or, uh, or, uh, I don't know, I don't know if they would count this, but like Tim Scott is black. He's not half black, raised by white people in Hawaii. He's just black. He's not half black. So you would get the full, full black, full black, full black, all black. But anyway, so I was kind of wondering. I was like, I wonder if Trump. You know, he's got to have, he's, he's got somebody talking to him. Like, someone's going, look, if it's just a coin toss, then go with the Hispanic guys. So maybe pick up a couple of votes, you know, or people, there's footage of you calling Mexicans stinky rapists or something. Maybe this will help, like, a, a little bit. I just like the fact where he goes, fuck it, I'm going with the whitest guy. Well, I think th- th- there's probably a couple of reasons for this. One, now this, the whole conversation of DEI and all like he's mm-hmm. w- they want you to do this and he's like nah fuck it I'm doing the other thing yeah my, my people hate that but also uh, another I think actually really smart play by Trump is that Vance has criticized Trump on multiple occasions and so playing the card of like I am going to hire somebody who's been critical of me and now look I'm I'm bridging yeah. the gap with with somebody that doesn't like me and critical of my th- I think that was yeah. also a smart play yeah, little Marco did that as well. Um, so everyone's in trouble now because it's fucking on. Because the what's going on is uh, so JD Vance is is a talker and he's smart and he's articulate and he will. So the new world order is 
you cannot negotiate with the terrorists. You have to bum rush the terrorists. And the people who are constantly called hate, hateful or racist or homophobic or something used to go, I'm, I, I have gay friends. I, I am no means what, what I said was taken out of context. And in the, like the last couple of years, they went all sort of Ben Shapiro, Tucker Carlson, JD Vance is this way. Trump, obviously this way where they're getting interviewed by 60 Minutes or CNN, and they're going, no, that statement was taken out. And they go, yeah, liar, fake news, fake news. And they start coming at them because if you you take a step, one step back, they take two steps forward. And so that's, if you really want to look at the era we're looking at now, it's the era where people aren't apologizing after being accused of being, you know, whatever it is, whether it's, in a debate or where. So what I'm saying, like, is in the past, Kamala Harris would do a debate with J.D. Vance. And then at some point, Kamala Harris is going to call him racist and, and explain that some misogynistic sex, sexist, you know, don't want women to have a, a right to health care, whatever it is. And in the past, the guy would go, those statements were taken out of context and they'd see him kind of backpedaling like you do in every relationship you've ever had. And then you'll see what women do, which is they keep encroaching and they get emboldened by it. He won't do that. And so that'll make it an interesting time when he goes on the news outlets on Sunday news, whatever, or like Kamala Harris is fucked now because he's sharp and he doesn't just because you call him a racist or homophobic or whatever, he's not going to back up. So it's going to get interesting. I don't know. There'll be a vice presidential debate. Absolutely. Be? Yeah. Unless right. unless they somehow avoid it. I mean, there, oh. typi there typically is one. Unless she's the president at the time. Right. Interesting. All right. All right. Well, this, this next story seems perfectly crafted for you, as I know you're a football fan yeah. and a big Swifty. Swifty. Uh, Travis Kelsey reveals the astronomical amount he paid for Taylor Swift's Super Bowl suite. Hmm. And... He said on an episode of Netflix's Receiver, while talking to fellow receiver George Kittle, fellow tight end George Kittle, they're fucking $3 million. So he paid $3 million the, for the suite that Taylor Swift spent the Super Bowl in. A lot of people said $1 million, $2 million. He said $3 million. Now, obviously... Taylor could just get that from the ashtray of her limo <laughs> right. and just make him whole again because yeah. there's enough floating around in there. But I guess what she I— She feels like the kind of woman who's like, I mean, he's the man, though. He's, he still should pay, right? <laughs> you know you know what would happen with me, like, quite honestly? Qu quite, here's why I could never do the $3 million suite. It has nothing to do with money. I'd be like, what comes with the suite? And they'd be like, sparkling wine, sodas, refreshment, full bar, stadium food. We got hot dogs. We got hamburgers. We got, we got everything. And I would say, okay. And I would pay $3 million for the suite. And then at some point, I'd be going to make myself a hot dog. And I'd go, oh, to the waitress, you got the uh, you got the yellow. Do you have like a brown, like a deli type mustard? And they go, I'm sorry, we don't. We don't have that. And I'd go, it's three million bucks. You, know, you don't have the, the brown mustard? <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody asked for that. A lot of people asked for that. P. Diddy was in here a couple last season. He wanted the brown mustard. <laughs> everybody asks for I, that. I, okay, I know, but shouldn't you, can't you just get some brown? They may have, they may have it. I, I don't know. And then it'd be like, I, I, I just like the deli mustard better. Yeah. And then they'd go, oh. Also, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting next to the Gildens family in the, yeah, the box next door. Yeah. They, they, certainly, they have their brown mustard over there. Yeah, I got the Grey Poupon family yeah. <laughs> over there. I got the Goons or the Gildens or the Goldens. Yeah, I don't know how to say I, it either. Jimmy says it's Goldens. Okay. I'm like, I don't know that it's Goldens. I think it's Goldens. I went Gildens. You Gild went Gil Gildens. Gildens I've not seen. Yeah. I don't know. We're going to have to find out whether it's <laughs> Goldens or Goldens. Either way. I got uh, Colonel Mustard invited here, but I want some brown deli mustard. And they'd go, sir, we, everyone asked. And then once they told me everyone wants that, I would get angry. And then at some point I'd go, all right, I like to do my dog up. 
I like to do my hot dog Chicago style. You know, that to me is the best. I I go with the I go with the mustard. I go uh, chopped onion. I don't understand. I want the poppy seed I, I don't, bun. I don't, yes. I don't understand people that fuck up their hot dogs. Like, a just ketchup. Just ketchup. I'm like, I, get the chopped up onion and the no. relish and the, and, the, and the mustard on there. No, I just like the, okay. The so, guy who jo- goes just ketchup, he's the guy that sees a shooter about to take out the yeah, president. Yeah, that's he's who like, that guy I'm is. I'm good. You, yeah. I'm, I'll be back. I, uh, and then at some point I'd go, do you have the chopped up onion? And they'd go, everybody. And I'd go, okay, I have $3 million. And then I'd be, <laughs> the whole thing would be ruined I after w- that. And then at some point, Jimmy would say, I'm, I'd am i like a Diet Coke. And they'd go, we just have Pepsi products in the state. And I'd go, oh, fucking hell, God. And Jimmy won't drink Pepsi. And that would be that. And I, I'd be ruined. The I whole was game lucky enough for the SoFi Super Bowl, the uh, the Rams and Bengals, to sit in a luxury box. And I thought it was pretty, you know, their sushi, it was pretty good. But I'm sure I would have judged it differently had I had to pay one single dollar to be there. Mm-hmm. I would have been like, for free, I was like, this is pretty good. Well, for Travis, three million's defi- it's definitely a write-off because that's yeah. business. He's literally at work that day, right? We have uh, we have the O'Malley. It's at the end. Maybe we'll oh, oh. <laughs> maybe we'll wait for Mike O'Malley to come in here before we play him. Is it Goldens or Gouldens? <sighs> well, you guys got to look it up. Then. Somebody's <laughs> gonna have to fire up that computer, and you can also tell me if the guy went up the ladder. And the, is, am I getting that story right, B- Byron? Up the ladder, gun train, turn around, went down, and then the firing started. How long after that? Look, If I'm telling you to look it up, look it up, because I assume you're looking it up. What I like about the ladder story is it's almost cartoonish because you can only back down a ladder. He can't yeah. turn and go down the ladder. Mm-hmm. You can only do, you can only sort of sheepishly, sheepishly back, down back, down back out of the room. Yeah, unless you do the sort of fireman slide where you put your you clamp your feet on. And, oh, but yeah, I bet, yeah. Okay, so I looked up the pronunciation. I have not listened to this yet, but we can just listen together. Is it Goldens or Gildens or Goldens? Goldens. What? What? Gold. I heard Goldens. That was all of them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That was terrible. (laughs) Goldens. 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 Yeah, hold it's on. closer to Goldens. Is it Andrea or Andrea? Yeah. It's Andrea. (laughs) (laughs) Wait a minute. That's both. Wait, I want I, once again because okay, so I used to on. tell I used to tell Jimmy it was Gould. Well, it's G U L D something. Is it G U L D E N S? And Jimmy always said it's Goldens, and then he did that thing that everyone does to anyone who grew up in North Hollywood and has never left, where they go, "I'm from New York," and then you go, "Okay, you know everything," because I'm from fucking Valley yeah. Village, so we don't know anything. Right. All right, I'm gonna go with Goldens. Try it again. Goldens. Here we go. Goldens. 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 <laughs> well, it's not golden. golden. Wouldn't be like a golden eagle. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, but it's not it's, golden. It's, it's more. Golden. It's more like seagull. Yeah, gold. But he's Goldens. going gal. He's going know, up. Gold. And it's an AI voice. It's not even yeah, a real yeah. person uh, saying. Fuck this. this guy. He doesn't know shit about. Mustard. I thought there was an I in there. That's why I said guilt. I thought it was G U I. So I just had the spelling wrong. Fucking Goldens. robot doesn't know shit about mustard. <laughs> Find me a robot. He's from Chicago. <laughs> Chicago, and that's the best Chicago. dog, everybody. Gaggins. All right, what's next? Uh, speaking of hefty price tags, uh, we've got the details on the engagement ring that Jeff Bezos gave to his fiance, wife, Lauren Sanchez. And the uh, it's a 30 carat pink diamond set on a platinum band. And much like Travis Kelsey's uh, Super Bowl suite. The ring is estimated to cost between three and five million dollars. Um, is I, okay. Could be things. upwards of five million, depending on the exact specifications. Is there a little weird? Is is, she, is it a little weird? You know, like she's like a, a fifty-six-year-old woman, and she's wearing a thong-back bikini, yeah. and has like a big boob job, yeah. and is like constantly just taking the fake boobs and shoving them out there, and it, it, it's got a, it's got a little fetish kind of angle to it yeah i mean they're living their best life but there is a 
Is there a little optic, like a little optics thing where it's like, look, I you, can't go with the twenty-five-year-old, so I'm going you, with the. You, what I'm saying is, is like when you're whether it's rings or or whatever it is, like okay, you're a billionaire and uh, you you do more to pollute than any other company does or something, but you have your detractors that want to know why one man needs so much money and you have a 370 foot yacht, you know, and stuff like that. And like the ring, I, isn't the ring sort of an opportunity to go, we didn't use blood diamonds. Mm-hmm. We use culture diamonds made of recycled bottles. It's my grandmother's ring that I had reset. Right. You get her the super expensive one, yeah. sort of on the down low. You tell her she can wear it inside the mansion or on <laughs> yeah. the yacht. But when we go outside, we got the rap about either my grandma's or the recycle. We didn't want to use a blood diamond. We took the money. That we, you know. By the way, De Beers is going nuts because... De Beers, like, it's supposed to be... Is it De Beers or De Burt? <laughs> <laughs> it's De Bears. De Bears. De Bears. De Bears, Chicagoan. De Beers goes, well, the rule of thumb is three months paycheck. That's $80 billion. And he, right. he only drops three million bucks. Like, De Beers, fucking, they're outraged yeah. at this point. Like, this fucking guy. What he did was equivalent to a guy who drives a UPS truck spending $9 yeah. on a ring. And they need three... I do like what's customary by the people who profit from what's customary. Right. I do like that yeah, they yeah. said it's usually about three months salary. Yeah, that's a rule of thumb. Yeah. For us. So, as as money. a comedian, I was like, the three month salary is great. I'm giving you a negative that's fourteen right. dollar ring. I'm giving you some drink vouchers. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah all right. Listen, I I'd like to hang out with them. So oh, I'm you sure know, I don't want to be I don't want to be a hater. I just Fine that she has her tits out all the time and her lips plumped and he's just standing there like a nerd doctor who's evil. taking a prostitute to the prom. <laughs> you know, yeah. like he looks like a nerd who got a hot call girl to go to the prom with him, paid her nine hundred bucks, and it's like, listen, baby, your rap is you're in love with me, and that's all we met at needs. camp. We met at camp, and that's all anyone needs to know. Yeah. Like literally, there was like a, oh, there was like a '90s movie with. Uh, Is that the one with bad she, Sheila Rosenkamp? <laughs> I don't know. That was the one. There was a '90s movie with a hot cut there. Uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, the cut, girl next door. Yeah, girl next door. That's Great. basically that. yeah. that's what he does. He's yeah. he's the nerd. He's a nerd from band camp who got a prostitute to come to a high end prostitute to go to prom with him, and everyone's looking at him. All right. Anyway, I'm jealous. On on far smaller scale of money, a Detroit woman, 65 years old, is taking on MGM Grand after being denied a hundred and twenty seven thousand dollar blackjack win due to a band she says she knew nothing about. A blackjack win at a hundred and some thousand dollars. So she was playing one of the progressive um, hands where you put like a fiver on the side. Uh-huh. And if your cards match the dealer's cards or whatever, can, it's a progressive jackpot. So she had a uh, jack and king of spades in her hand. And the dealer had an ace and queen of spades in her hand. So she had a four card royal flush progressive and, and she won $127,000. She was ecstatic, uh, but her joy was short-lived. After checking her ID, staff informed her she would not be receiving a dime of her six-figure payout, then accused her of trespassing and claimed she had been banned from the casino for an alleged panhandling incident in 2015. She's also arguing, well, they let me gamble here for eight years and never threw me out for my panhandling until I won $127,000. Yeah, I... I think they need to to pay her. That seems pretty pretty convenient. And it's MGM. We're not talking about a little rinky dink, you know, Detroit yeah, Indian that's casino. Or whatever. You're MGM. Just pay the lady. Uh, just to not have this story be read on this show. No, and yeah, just this show alone in the two minutes we've been talking about is probably yeah. worth the the price of admission for MGM. Yeah, I I agree. 
And by the way, if it's any consolation, if she was panhandling and you give her like one hundred twenty three thousand dollars large, she's going to be dead by Friday. Like she's, <laughs> yeah, she's going to yeah. fucking fentanyl if you're, something. If your panhandling claims are real, she'll be dead. She won't last long. Yeah, you can go collect the rest from under her mattress. Absolutely, freaking lootly. All right, let's see. We got Mike O'Malley. Uh, let's just play that stupid bit just for fun. I don't know. Let's see if played for Mike <clears throat> as well. It's at the end, but eh, the bit makes me. Do you want the whole sense. bit? Or How long is the, the whole bit? It's, it, it's a few minutes. How long? It's a few minutes. It's like five minute bit. Well, I know it's a few minutes. All right, well, you can play. Just play it. Let's see. Number of accents I see here. Can you give us a little sampling of the accents? Which you one do you want? Try the Irish one, if you want. O'Malley. It's just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Yeah. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Forget the code, just go. Well, we got some tough decisions to make here. Well, well I got my notes. I'm going to go whack off and then we'll decide. 